Thank you for tuning in to QA Bytes. In the last episode of the Continuous Performance Testing and DevOps series, we discussed how we can evaluate performance at the acceptance stage as well as in production. In the last episode of this series, I want to discuss the overall approach to building continuous performance into your pipelines. I want to give you a conceptual overview of the process that can be used to put this all together. First, we'll start out with the system that we're testing, and of course, we'll need a tool to generate load and throughput. Remember that we want more than user-level metrics, so ideally, we're monitoring the application and infrastructure using APM solutions while the tests are executed. Next, we'll want to collect the results from both the load and APM tools, and ideally, put them in a time series database. Then we need a mechanism to alert the appropriate people that the tests have completed and of any anomalies that were detected. And of course, we want to make the results available to anyone that needs to see them. And finally, the entire process should be as automated as possible. You might be thinking that this seems like a lot of work and don't see how you can carve off time with everything else in the backlog. And you're right, this isn't a trivial amount of work. However, you don't need to build it overnight. A good place to start is with executing a few simple component tests automatically as part of your build deployment. Then getting an APM solution running in the environment if there isn't one already. And then finally results collection and broadcasting the results to those that need to see them. And speaking of the backlog, this work should be part of your technical backlog so it becomes part of your efforts toward continuous improvement. If this is off the books work, it's likely never going to be done. You need to manage it the same way you do your development work. Before we wrap up, it's important to step back and think about some of the realities associated with this implementation. First, I recommend you start small. A good place to start is running some component level tests against a few of your more critical components. Get comfortable with the process and the tools it takes to execute the test as part of your CI process and get the information to the team in a consumable and actionable state. Work out the kinks and then scale to other components, other teams, and eventually to other stages of the delivery cycle. And as I mentioned, this shouldn't be off the books work. Make implementation part of your technical backlog. And part of getting comfortable with the process is not overwhelming your team, which is another reason to start small. This is information that the team likely has not received before, at least not with any regularity. You need to prepare them so they are not only ready to consume it, but they understand it. And just as important, the team needs to be prepared to act on it. Much of the value of performance testing is in the analysis. You can't assume that your team possesses the ability to understand the data you're giving them and take action on it. This is going to be a learning process. Also, successful performance testing activities aren't just implementing tools. You need to make sure you've taken care of the supporting factors. Remember, we don't have unlimited time to execute tests, so you need to think very critically about which tests are important. And if these tests are going to be executed as part of your delivery cycle, they need to be run on demand. So you need to understand what that means from a test environment and data perspective. Finally, this won't be a fire and forget solution. As you implement continuous performance testing, you should get feedback from the team and improve the solution so it's adding the appropriate value to your delivery cycle. As the ability to understand the performance data and take action on it evolves, the team can provide valuable feedback on what information they get and how they get it. And of course, this shouldn't be done in a vacuum. Everything that you're doing should be out in plain sight to ensure that you can make the work part of the technical backlog and continuous improvement efforts. Thank you for watching this episode of QA Bytes. Stay tuned for future QA Bytes series where we'll continue to discuss relevant software quality and testing topics.